right, Sarah, we're going to start off where we left off last time. And last time we were talking kind of about, you know, your idea that failing these tests meant that you were going to be just like your family who, um, you know, weren't very successful in life and that eventually you were also going to be a failure at life too. Mm -hmm. And we started talking about how maybe that not might be true. So I'd like to touch a little bit more on that today. And mm -hmm. what I want to work on with you is kind of talk about how like this one specific behavior Sorry. of you failing a test mm -hmm. may not be representative of you as a whole person. Okay? okay. So let's, 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 let's look at the behavior first. So again, what's the behavior that's giving you the most problems right now? Um, well, I get really anxious when I'm taking tests and then I don't do well. Okay, right. So you, and, and <laughs> just to sum up, you study, you're ready for the tests, and then when it's time to take the tests, the anxiety prevents you from doing as well as you can do on it. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's separate out that behavior um, from yourself as a person so that you're not categorizing yourself based on it. So do you think, and think about this for a second, is there a difference between you know, this one slice of behavior and, like, you generalized as a person? Um, uh, yeah. I, well, it doesn't feel that way. Okay. Well, think about it this way. When you're saying that you're a failure, you're saying that one of your core characteristics is a failure. Mm -hmm. Okay? That, that you just as a person, that's how you were born. Mm -hmm. But... Does that really translate? Can you really say that that's who you are based on this one example? I mean, I guess not. So, point to some instances where you didn't fail. Um, well, I did get into grad school as the only one I applied to. Okay. So, I mean, that was a pretty big deal. Right. So, you were just, you were confident. You knew that when you applied, you were going to get in. Mm -hmm. So, that doesn't really sound like someone who believes they're a failure. Yeah. How about some other instances in which you can point to yourself not being a failure? Um, well, I'm pretty good at writing papers. Okay, that's right. You talked about that last time. What do you get on your papers? I usually get A's or B pluses. Okay. What else? Of where I don't fail? Mm-hmm. <coughs> well, I was always good at dance. Okay, yeah, you were on a dance team or something, mm -hmm. won awards. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else? Um, that's about all I can think of. Okay. What about in other areas of your life? Successful friendships? I do have a friend I've been friends with since middle school. Okay. So that's a good friendship that I have. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what else, though. Okay, so you got through undergrad, you had mm -hmm. so few doubts about grad school that you just applied to one school because you knew where you were going to get in. Mm -hmm. You've been getting A's and B's in all of your work except for the tests. Mm -hmm. You are successful athletically, you're successful with friendships. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some other areas in your life that if we really wanted to dig, we could find them. So how come you're using this this one slice of your behavior, these failures at tests, to say that you are failing in general as a person? I mean, I guess I don't know why I do that. It's just, I really don't like when I do poorly, so then it feels like it's the worst thing ever. Sure. So then I feel like I'm a failure. Sure. Because making mistakes can, can feel pretty awful. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're driven to do really well. And would you agree that, you know, failing a test is kind of similar to making a mistake? Um, yeah. I mean, it feels like a real big mistake. Sure. And and why are you having those outcomes? What's happening right before the test? Uh, well, I get really worried. Um, everyone seems like they're going really fast. And then I start thinking that I'm going to fail it. And worrying about that and then I do poorly. So you're getting really anxious and it's mm -hmm. resulting in some behavior that's not leading to the best outcome and it's leading to those tests that mm -hmm. but 
What about before you dance? What about before you write a paper? What about before you went to grad school? Were you anxious? Were you... I guess I didn't really worry that much about those things. Okay. So again, why are you letting <laughs> this very small part of your life define you as a person? You are saying, I, Sarah, am a failure based on this one very small slice of behavior. Mm. Yeah, I guess I see what you mean. And what would happen if we were to get rid of your anxiety before you take the test? Well, I'd probably do fine, because I think I know the information pretty well. Mm -hmm. So, I'd probably be okay. So, if you got rid of the anxiety and did fine on the tests, would you still be able to call yourself a failure? Uh, I guess not. But, so basically right now you're calling yourself a failure because of some anxiety, some test anxiety. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, would you use this kind of judgment with somebody else? Like, if a friend came up to you and said, I failed a test, would you be thinking to yourself, oh, they must be a pretty big failure? No, I would just be thinking that they probably had something up with the test. Or, you know, like, maybe they weren't prepared, or maybe they were mess that thing up but I wouldn't say it means anything about them as a person it's okay. just that does okay so because you understand that when they make a mistake or when you look at a very small slice of their behavior you're attributing it to situational factors and not dispositional factors yeah so why are you doing that for yourself I don't know I guess I just think of it differently for myself it doesn't really make much sense mm -hmm. What would you say to this other person, this friend of yours that told you that you the test? I would say that just because they um, did bad on one test doesn't mean that they can't do good on the next test. I would just kind of want them to try to think positive about the future. Okay. And if they said to yourself that they thought that failing this test made them a failure, what might you say to them? That's just a test. Okay. Um that they just failed the test. They didn't, it doesn't mean that they failed as a person. Okay, so now let's turn some of that harsh criticism away from yourself. What new belief could you develop after failing a test aside from I'm a failure as a person? Um, that I just messed up this one time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that one test doesn't make who you are. It's just a test. Okay. I mean, even if it's important, it's still not all of me. Okay. How does it feel to say that? I mean, it feels more real, like realistic, I mm -hmm. guess. And I don't feel as worried. Okay. I mean, you still feel kind of bad because I don't want to do bad. But sure. It doesn't feel as hopeless. Okay. Well, and now compare that to the feeling you get when you just finish a test and you think yourself to yourself, I'm a failure. How does it feel to think that? Well, that feels awful. Okay. And I feel like it's just pointless and I should just stop trying. Mm -hmm. So. All right. And so, obviously, which way would you rather feel? Well, I'd rather feel better. Okay. So, in the future, after failing a test, what if you were to try to catch yourself when you were thinking that negative thought and try to replace it with that new one? Do you think that's something you might be able to do? Yeah, I think I could try to think of it that way. Mm -hmm. I might try first they'll think it's all the way, but I'll have to catch myself and try to think about it different. Okay. And just us kind of sitting here and talking about it right now, how much do you buy into the the idea that you may not be a failure, you just may not be so good at taking tests until we can get your anxiety under control. I mean, I guess I can believe that. I mean, there, like we talked about a lot of things that I'm doing pretty well at, mm -hmm. so I can believe that. But it still feels like maybe it might be a little difficult for you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can buy it 100%. And that's okay because remember one of the first things that we talked about when we first met is that, you know, this is a belief that you've come to develop and really believe in over the past two years. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, saying in this one session, this is what I'm going to do instead doesn't mean that it's going to go away overnight. Mm -hmm. But I would encourage you to keep, you know, thinking about, you know, behavior as being separate from yourself as a person and keep thinking about 
all of the things that you've done that say there's no way this person is a failure when you have those other thoughts running through your head. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that something you can try? Yeah, I'll try doing that. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> she starts whining. <laughs> <laughs>